crazy, <laughs> crazy. It blew my mind, blew my mind. We have to have a test. I'm allowed to have fun today. All in the name of some good B-roll. I go right out behind all of these monstrous mega yachts because I can't bear the thought of doing anything in close proximity to them. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so we're here in St. Martin, and uh, we've had a few days of rest and um, a nice Thanksgiving dinner yesterday as well at um, an American boat. Mm. We've pretty much squared away the Falcon. So the day that we arrived, uh, we popped something up on Instagram just saying like, hey, we're here in St. Martin, we've just finished our journey. And immediately his friend from Australia messages. One of my oldest friends since before I can remember. Um, in fact, many of my friends from back in Perth disappeared off to travel and a lot of them found their way into like the into super yacht crews and um, two of them are still doing it and have made their way they're, they're quite quite successful anyway one of them sends me a message says Dan his brother is gonna be in St Martin he arrives tonight which was last the night day after that we arrived we had just pulled in and we were tucking into a Thanksgiving dinner and I get a text from my oldest friend saying I'm gonna be here tomorrow and so come and visit me <laughs> come and visit here yeah, come and see the boat come and go for yeah. a walk through the only way we can get in to see the boat which is in Phillipsburg just south of here is if they send us a car and have us collected and then for uh, for other reasons unclear to me um, they will be moving the boat from uh, Phillipsburg to Simpson Bay which is where uh, we, are. we are now. Essentially what's going to happen is we're going to have a car pick us up this morning, taken to a super yacht where we'll be temporarily added to the crew and driven the one mile around the corner <laughs> to Simpson Bay. In summary, I get to catch up with my one of my oldest friends and we get yeah. to go for a ride on a mega yacht. <laughs> yeah, and we'll take you along as much of the journey as we can film. Yes. Because I do believe there are a lot of parts of the boat that you can't film, but we'll try and get a camera in there somewhere. We'll have to play okay? the game. Um, yeah. we, we won't do anything untoward. Yep. And there will be some things we can't film, I'm sure, but we'll, yeah, we'll try and take you for as much of the journey as possible. We looked up this super yacht this morning and we found out that it was, to charter it, it cost 55... Half a million euros. Yeah, just week. over half a million euros a week to charter this boat. So if we're going to be on there for half an afternoon, that's 39,000 <laughs> euros. That's one fourteenth of, is, of yep. half a million euros. 39,000 euros. Which is the euros. equivalent, <laughs> if you convert it into US, of $47,000, which is the exact same price that we paid for our boat. So for one <laughs> afternoon on this super yacht, you could buy a boat. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy. It blew my mind. Blew my mind. <laughs> All right, we really will be and late we're though really if late, we don't so go. We've gotta so go. we've got to go. We've dodged we've, we've really three countries. We dodged the stick up the nose, and my first visit to a super yacht, and I have to have a test. <laughs> I'm suddenly really doubting that sneeze that I had in the morning, and I'm starting to think maybe I'm COVID. Kiara's going to single-handedly bring down a super yacht. Oh, this is I can't believe the first ever COVID test I'm going to get is from Dan. That's <laughs> weird, isn't it? We specifically went to a country that did not require COVID tests purely because we didn't want to get one. <laughs> it's super, super easy, so I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, look at that cotton bud, it's huge. It's not going to fit up your nose. <laughs> Just 
On a scale of one to ten, I'd say that was a fairly gentle three, as far as a violent test could go. After waiting 15 minutes for our tests, the results came back in. I'm negative. Yes. This one. I'm allowed to have fun today. Negative. Clean as a whistle. Alright, so we finished with our COVID test, which was very unexpected, and I'm not gonna lie, I was very petrified. Adam and I specifically tried to find a country that didn't need them, just to avoid doing them. So anyway, we've had them done now. We're going to move, they're going to, sorry, not me at all. Um, they're gonna move the boat around to the next bay over. So we'll just like film them with their lines and things like that. Um, and he's mentioned as well, like you can't really film too much on the boat. Um, understandably, because it's kind of someone's home as well. They do live here quite often, apparently. Oh, actually, I think they're starting to move now. I really feel like we stick out like like tourists. We really do. We're just running around with cameras, trying not like we're not getting in people's way, but we're just like, oh, what are you doing now? Oh, look at that fender! Can't pick that fender. <laughs> So the, the deck crew is constantly reporting by way of radio from the stern and the bow to the captain at the bridge. Constant, constant relay of 5 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, you're, you're drifting left, you're drifting right, or they say port and starward because they're professional mariners. Um, and I was talking to Dan earlier when he was testing us for COVID, he said that the, the, the tiniest bit of motion, like you know, this boat is so heavy it will carry a knot of speed for a mile. Um, before it'll come to a stop without, without assistance. So they have to use the tiniest of tiny inputs and constantly measure the motion and the momentum that the boat's generating so that it doesn't get away from them. Um, because once it does, it's a, you know, it, it sort of becomes a dynamically unstable system. And, and the, more you, the more you try to stop it, the more, the more oomph you have to use and the more you risk making it worse or overcompensating perhaps in the other direction. So it's, um, I'm sure these guys are all totally relaxed, but to us it all seems really tense. They're just for the fenders. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty neat. So this, like, extremely elaborate piece of kit is just to adjust the fenders. It's just hang it just sits here for the fenders. They don't scratch the paint when they flash them over the side. It's so elaborate. Sure. I'm not the handprint, I'm afraid to touch anything, particularly the stainless, because I'll leave grubby, for grubby fingerprints on everything. So half the boat's just coming apart just to get the tinder out. It's just crazy. <laughs> So we're here in Simpson Bay and if you see a teensy tiny little speck out there, that is our minute boat in comparison to this huge massive one. I think that they are getting everything ready for the owner to come by in a few days. So it's pretty cool. We got to see the boat moving. We got to get here and anchor. It's gonna actually hang out. 
and I think now we're just going to actually hang out with Adam's friend and you know chill and catch up and, and do all that. There might be a small <laughs> So we've arrived and we've had our fun in terms of we've gone to this cool soup yacht, we've um, eaten lots of cheese and lots of chocolate and we now kindly think we should really do some work when we're here. Um, mainly we have actually got to measure up our sails uh, in order for us to get some new ones sent out. Um, it should be a pretty easy job, they've uh, sent us instructions and with precision sails you do it all yourself which is awesome because we never really like going to or attempting to go to docks or picking people up and all that stuff. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take the old sails down and measure them which we're going to go and do on the beach. We need to do a few measurements as well from up the mast and from the waterline etc. So it should be pretty easy, it should be done in um, about an hour or so. Um, but that is our today job, let's get some sails on the way. Step one, we have to get the jib down again, see if we can do a better job than last time. Ah. Yes. Much better. We almost Nailed it. flaked it. <laughs> we almost flaked it, yeah. <laughs> I was like, quickly! <laughs> what was that? Okay. The design and measurement process with the guys at Precision has been super easy thus far. Once you decide to go ahead with a purchase, you're given access to the Precision portal, where you can find the measurement forms corresponding to your new sale. In addition to the easy to follow instructions on the form itself, there are instructional videos embedded in the form that will take you to Precision's YouTube page and walk you step by step through the whole process. In addition to the easy to follow instructions on the form itself, there are instructional videos embedded in the form that will take you to Precision's YouTube page and will walk you step by step through the whole process. at first about our measurements and the possibility of ending up with a sail that didn't fit. Thankfully after sending off our measurements the designers came back with a few follow-up questions to check our homework as they like to say and after a few checks and rechecks we felt confident that everything was correct. For a staysail and a genoa the whole process took less than two hours. <sighs> so we've, uh, we've had a busy couple of weeks Last time we checked in with you, we had arrived in Simpson Bay, which is where we are now. Um, we spent Thanksgiving here, it was my birthday. We also caught up with a, a, one of my oldest friends who happened to be passing through. He's the 2IC on one of these mega yachts. Um, and it was very serendipitous that we should cross paths and we had a great time, caught up with Dan. Uh, but Simpson Bay is very rolly anchorage, very busy anchorage, lots of airport traffic, lots of boat traffic. Also, we would like to go to the French side because the bay is a lot better for one, but also because we can then check in and out of French nations as of now. I don't know whether that's going to stay the case, but we can check into all French nations um, without a PCR test. Like we just just like like normal. So that really frees us up to move around a little bit and put some extra miles under the keel. The annoying part was that here in St. Martin, um, and in case you don't know, St. Martin is half French, half Dutch. We checked into Simpson Bay on the Dutch side, so we're checked into a Dutch nation presently. We're allowed, we have freedom to roam all over the island, in the dinghy, on foot, but if we want to move the boat from here to, to seven miles around the corner, which is Marigot Bay, which is a French side of the island, we have to check out of the Dutch side, check into the French side, which requires a PCR test. We're already here and I'm allowed to walk up to the Customs and Immigration Office, knock on the door and shake their hand, high fives all around and present my COVID test 
by hand, having checked into the Dutch side, but I can't move my boat. I can't possibly take the yacht around the corner without a PCR test. So a little bit silly, it's taken us about a week to get it all, jump through all the hoops and figure out what's going on. Fortunately for us, uh, as you probably probably saw recently, we weren't able to go aboard the super yacht that shall remain nameless without a PCR test. So we had a PCR test and we managed to use that to move around the corner. The timings worked out that we could use that PCR test by the skin of our teeth. So we saved ourselves about 170 bucks a head there. And uh, it's all, all buttoned up. We're checked out of the Dutch side. We're checked into the French side, despite having not moved yet. Um, the, sta the sail is back up. We had them off to, uh, to measure them up and go through the process with precision. And we are ready to move. Our challenge for the day will be to avoid all of these super yachts while we're sailing. They're everywhere. We're going to go right out behind all of these monstrous mega yachts because I can't bear the thought of doing anything in close proximity to them that might result in a collision. I can hear Adam piping up in the background. That one's owned by the guy who owns Dyson. That one's owned by the one who owns Walmart. And that's Kerry Packer. Uh, Kevin Packer? Kerry Packer. Kerry Packer's one. I'm gonna let him explain which ones are which because there are so many by so many rich people. Right, so everyone gossips in Simpson Bay about who owns what and there's Facebook groups about it in St. Martin. So thus far we understand that this really beautiful old steamship looking one is the guy who owns Dyson. And I think it's a Sir something or other, Dyson. Um, this one here with the blue, bluish top, if that's chaos, and I think it is, it's owned by the heir to the Walmart fortune. If I'm not mistaken, the one out the back there, the white, <laughs> the white one, they're all white, is, uh, belongs to the guy who runs and owns and, and created a, maybe um, Crown Casinos, Kerry Packer. He's a, an Australian businessman, pretty famous guy. Well, he was back in the day. And now he hangs out on his super yacht in St. Martin, it would seem. So in previous years, these boats would have actually been in St. Bart's and been like all here, there and everywhere, um, in marinas and everything. But because of COVID, they're all just kind of stuck out at anchor, um, which apparently is not the case uh, in most years gone by. Um, but it's cool for us because it means we get to check out all of these super yachts without having to go to the rich fancy places They're all just here and every morning we wake up and go. Oh, there's about five more today <laughs> And they go off and do their business and then to next day we see another five more immediately saw out there um, near Anguilla, that's where we left to go to Bermuda and we were so excited when we did and I just came, my memories came back uh, for that moment and then I looked into this uh, kind of channel here and, uh, and once again memories came back of when we came back from Bermuda and we were so excited, to, we were so excited that we'd finally made landfall but at the same time like a little bit heartbroken that we didn't get to where we wanted to go but so many memories in, in this place. It's like a sort of kind of a love-hate place for us. We um, we really love it for the for the fact that it like 
saved us and we got so many things done here. We managed to fix the boat here, um, but at the same time we also, it, it's a little bit like a magnet. We stayed here longer than we should have. So we do have a little bit of a relationship with, with uh, St. Martin. <laughs> Jib is away. We are uh, just pulling into Marigold Bay now. Pretty calm, 348. We're just gonna go another half a mile, then we'll round up into the wind, drop the main, and find a place to put a hook in. <laughs> 